we come to this sacred space, made more sacred in this moment by the presence and attention of each and every one of us. Last week, we welcomed live streamers from cities and towns across Massachusetts and from Cherry Creek, Colorado, St. Peter's, Missouri, Fairfax, Virginia, and even Sherbrooke, Quebec. Wherever you're logging in from, we are so glad you are here. I now invite those here in the sanctuary to take a moment and turn towards the camera near the welcoming congregation banner and offer greetings to our live streaming friends through a friendly wave. And now here in the sanctuary, let's turn and greet one another. Good morning. May we all rejoice in the beauty of this morning. We gather together in our individual and collective journeys towards spiritual growth, social transformation, environmental responsibility, and living out these values through worship, reflection, connection, and service. You are part of a community that welcomes all individuals, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, income, ability, or spiritual beliefs. Whether in person or via live stream, we share this precious time and space together. Let's rejoice in this time together. There will be a brief con congregational meeting right after we extinguish the chalice. After the meeting, all are invited to Metcalf Hall for an end of year potluck lunch. If you forgot to bring something, no worries. There will be plenty. Brenna Mayer is out sick today, and so a uh, WUS member and RE teacher, Riley Simpson, is graciously stepping in to help out for this service. We have some special announcements this morning. We will begin with Reverend Heather. Thank you, Marcy. <clears throat> it is my delight to introduce our worship and administrative intern, Ella Crom, who began working with us this week and will be part of the office and summer services. <clears throat> I also wish to celebrate that our newly elected affiliated community minister, the Reverend Cynthia Davidson, is with us this morning and will be assisting with part of the flower ceremony later in the service. Welcome back, Reverend Cindy. Please rise and wave. She will also say a few words at our congregational meeting. I now invite Martin Newhouse to share his announcement. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to remind you all that next weekend, pardon me, next Sunday, we begin our 2023 summer services for, and I hope you will all come as when you are available. As you saw from the announcements, the rolling announcements, our first service next Sunday is our now annual poetry service, which will be led by Reverend Heather. Uh, please note that except for the service on June 25th, every service we have will start at 10 a.m., not 10.30, and we're doing that so the sanctuary will not get too warm during the hot weather, which inevitably will come. On the 25th, we'll start at our normal time, 10.30, because we're going to be then at 11 o'clock uh, enjoying the services from General Assembly. Also, there will be no summer service on July 2nd in honor of the July 4th weekend. The schedule for the services has been printed in highlights. I hope it'll be printed again, and also will be on, I hope, the church's website. And those descriptions, I hope, will have a brief description of each lay-led service. So if you are in town, please come join us for our summer services. We have a really terrific lineup this summer. Thanks.
Good morning. It's so nice to see everybody here this morning. So uh, my name's Donna Reed, and this is Fritzy Nates. And um, Fritzy was one of the co-chairs on the rummage sale, and I was the gopher. <laughs> and I just wanted to start by thanking my dear friend Susan Wallowitz, who unfortunately she and Michael couldn't be here today. But Susan's the person who really got us going. We would not have had a rummage sale if it wasn't for her. She just kept insisting. Um, Michael Coughlin, Susan's husband, was all in from the beginning. He made dress racks. He made and painted uh, closets for the American Girl doll clothes. He loaned, the, loaned me his truck countless times. He was a delightful greeter at the door, and he even delivered some of the heavy furniture without being asked. Susan also recruited her friends Rini and Zelda to work in jewelry and art, and Susan worked tirelessly through the whole rummage sale and helping to organize. I can't even begin to describe everything they did. So um, I also want to thank Fritzy. I actually found her something at the rummage sale, <laughs> which is a T-shirt which you probably can't says, see, which says, Fearless. <laughs> <laughs> and it is well earned because she just stepped in. She is a terrific organizer and just was unbelievable. Thank you. Well, thank you, Donna. And this whole thing would not have happened without Donna. I know you guys all know this, but I think Donna touched and moved three quarters of everything that was at the rummage sale. <laughs> she packed up, picked up, recruited, just amazing. So I already gave her a little gift and it was a head massager and some bath salts. So we're hoping <laughs> she's beginning to relax a little bit. But we want to thank everyone. This was a huge success. I think over 60 people participated. Wuss is back. So lest I leave anybody out, this is just a big thank you to all who helped in any way, shape, or form. And we've asked Kathy Richardson, who was one of the rummage sale treasurers, to present us with the final numbers. So Kathy. <laughs> this is the big reveal. So over 900 people came through our doors to shop. That's huge. Lots of community outreach and exposure. This is our number, $27,400. Happy dance. We were hoping for 25, so awesome. And stay tuned for our next fundraiser in November, Fall Into the Arts. Rest up, we'll have plenty of time to prepare. Thank you, everybody. It seems our hearts and minds are already open. So let us keep them open uh, to be present to the spirit of worship with these words by the Reverend Norbert Chapek. He is the creator of the first flower ceremony. This is a traditional flower ceremony prayer adapted for our invocation. Infinite spirit of life, we ask thy blessings on the flowers we bring, thy messengers of fellowship and love. May they remind us amid diversities of knowledge and of gifts to be one in desire and affection and devotion to thy holy will. May they also remind us of the value of comradeship, of doing and sharing alike. May we realize that whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us are needed to do thy work in the world. With this aspiration in our hearts, let us worship together delighting in the beauty, peace, and possibility whenever and wherever people of good heart gather. We dedicate the lighting of today's chalice with words by Amy Zucker Morgenstern. Within the heart of the flower, the fountain of beauty. Within the heart of the community, a fire that warms and dances. 
within the heart of each of us a spark of the spirit of life. Holy, holy, holy. Please rise in body or in spirit to join in singing hymn number 21 in the gray hymnal for the beauty of the earth. I now invite all the children to join Sam at the back of the um, at the back of the sanctuary to help bring in the flowers for our flower ceremony. As you might have noticed, I'm not Brenna. Um, I'm very sad that she couldn't be here today, but I'm very happy that I get to be a part of this ceremony. Thank you all for helping with this very important job. You can come sit on the steps over here. Uh, 
I want to share something with you. You guys see all of these beautiful flowers up here? I notice that some of these flowers look a little different. Some of them have different fun attributes and characteristics. Do you guys see anything on these flowers that look interesting? Yeah? Mm, the petals are different. Different sizes. Different colors, yeah. Long, short, and medium. Yeah, I agree. And do you also see that some of these flowers represent all of the different colors of the rainbow? Yeah. These colors are, except for blue. Hmm. There's got to be a blue flower hiding somewhere. This rainbow uh, represents part of our UU promises as well and our agreements on how to be a community with each and every one of us. This rainbow is important to the UUs for this reason. And the rainbow also represents something else that we celebrate at this time of year. Can you guess what I'm talking about? What do we celebrate during the month of June? Potluck. The potluck. <laughs> I'm celebrating. Pride? pride? That's correct. We also celebrate pride. It's the LGBTQ Pride Month. All around our city, state, and country, people are gathering in parades and parties, marches and memorials, festivals, and all sorts of fun and interesting activities to celebrate Pride Month. And the Pride flag is a rainbow. And the Pride flag is a rainbow, yeah. During the month of June, and especially on this very weekend, we are reminded to explore and celebrate LGBTQ plus peoples and their struggle, contribu contributions, culture, communities, and history as a part of our larger history and our continuing efforts of being in community with one another. So let's look back at these flowers. They're all different colors, right? Yeah. But what's the same about all of these flowers? Yeah? Um, they can be the same type, but different colors? They're the same thing. They're the same thing. They're all flowers. Yeah? Yeah, they can all be different sizes, but from the same plant, yeah? They all need water. They all need sunlight and nice faces. I agree. I agree. So we, see, so we see a lot of differences in these flowers, but we also see a lot of similarities. So, a hundred years ago, a UU minister named Reverend Chopek created the first flower ceremony or flower communion, which we call today. It's very cool. When he asked his congregation to bring flowers to church, he was hoping to remind them that we're all different and beautiful in our own ways. Ant on my paper, silly. He wants to be part of the communion. Sometimes when we don't understand someone else because they're different from us, we might be a little uneasy or afraid. Have you ever felt a little scared meeting someone who you don't know? Yeah, yeah. I sure have. We all do sometimes, but it's because we're different all in, this, in some way, and sometimes in really big ways, right? If we made a list, we could go on until infinity. It would be so long. What Pride Month and Reverend, Chop Reverend Chopek are asking us to do is to remember that these flowers um, are representing our differences. To remember that differences are actually what make us a community so beautiful and so, so beautiful and so powerful. Um, we need to celebrate their differences as much as our similarities. So we're going to do one more thing. We're going to help consecrate these flowers. Does anyone know what consecrate means? Anyone know what consecrate means? I know you do. <laughs> Consecration means that we're going to declare something to be sacred or holy, which means infinitely special to us. So we're going to gather up here at the chancel table and hold our hands towards these flowers. And you're going to repeat some words after me. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. We consecrate these flowers as a symbol of our infinite colors as people. We consecrate these flowers as a symbol of our infinite desire to be in community with one another. We consecrate these flowers 
as, our, as a symbol of our infinite ability to celebrate and care for each other. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, and let us return to our seats. The congregation Norbert Chopek founded so long ago still exists. I wish their current minister, the Reverend Dr. Peter Samoyski, could also be here to consecrate our gathered flowers along with our children. But as the Czech Republic is very far away, he will offer a blessing uh, through a video. This is first written by Chapek. He will read it first in Czech and then in English. Ve jménu prozřetelnosti, která do jádra ukládá budoucnost mohutného stromu a do srdcí vkládá budoucnost zbratřeného lidstva, ve jménu toho nejvyššího, co námi hýbe, co činí matku matkou, bratra bratrem a sestru sestrou, ve jménu mistrů a vůdců božských, kteří vlastních životů nasazovali, jen aby uspíšili příchod říše lidskosti, pro dobro vlastní a prospěch svého národa obnovme své předsevzetí, že si chceme být upřímnými bratry a sestrami bez ohledu na jakékoliv přehrady, které odcizují člověka člověku. V tomto svatém předsevzetí síliš nás vědomí, že jsme jedna boží rodina, že jeden duch, duch lásky nás spojuje a jedna snaha po dokonalejším a radostnějším životě nás vede. In the name of providence, which implants in the seed the future of the flower, and in our hearts the longing for people to live in harmony. In the name of the highest in whom we move and who makes the mother and father, the brother and sister, lover and loner for what they are. In the name of sages and great religious leaders, who sacrificed their lives to hasten the coming of the age of mutual respect. Let us renew our resolution, sincerely to be real brothers and sisters, regardless of any kind of bar which estranges us from each other. In this holy resolve may we be strengthened knowing that we are God's family, that one spirit the spirit of love unites us and endeavor for more a perfect and more joyful life. life. Amen. I now invite us to continue this centering time through ritual, kindling of the light, a time to light a candle here in the sanctuary or at home to signify a joy or sorrow you carry within. At that time, if you'd like a candle brought to you, please raise your hand. After we kindle the light, we'll be together for a time of shared silence. Out of the silence, we will sing the hymn, Mother Spirit, Father Spirit, number eight in the gray hymnal. This is another piece written by Chapek. Let us now kindle the light.
I recently celebrated a seasonal holiday of sorts. It's the day I go to the garden store to buy flowers to put in my planters and window boxes. As I wandered through the rows of potted flowers at Calarezos, begonias, petunias, marigolds, roses, with the hanging planters above me and the flowers at my feet, I felt like I was in a magical garden, alive with color and scent and beauty, delight. Only the creation of this garden was motivated by capitalism, as each pot had a white sticker with the same information scrawled in black marker, the kind of flower, the price, and whether it was an annual or a perennial. I came home with a patio arrangement curated by the Calareso staff, plus some roses and hanging basket for my porch awning. Now, whenever I come home, their beauty greets me, and I'm brought back to that magical garden. Preparing for this year's flower ceremony, the 100th anniversary of the flower ceremony, I kept returning to this experience at the garden store. Of course, some of it was reveling in the beauty of the flowers, as we are today. But it was also those words I saw over and over, annual and perennial. If you think about it, these two words speak to today's celebration. An annual flower is one that lasts for one season, one moment in time, and a perennial flower will grow back next year after winter, and with any luck and some care, it will be hardy enough to grow back every year. This service, like every worship service, is entirely unique. There are never the same people present, the same words spoken, the same joys, dreams, and losses in our hearts. Today is like an annual flower here for but a moment in time. And yet we take part in the ceremony year after year, perennially coming back to the same story, the same ritual, the same symbols of inclusion and belonging rendered delicate and beautiful through the flower ceremony. A hundred years in, this perennial tradition is hardy indeed. One part of the flower ceremony we tell each year is what happened to Norbert Chopek. After the ceremony was created, war erupted and spread throughout Europe, led by people who fought inclusion with fear and violence. But Chopek refused to stop spreading his message of belonging. Along with continuing to, to speak out, he helped transform his church into a place where local people could get precious rations of food and supplies and information helpful to those resisting the invaders. This was a dangerous thing to do. The Nazis eventually arrested him and sent him to a camp where he was executed. So when we celebrate the flower ceremony, we take part in a quaint and elegant ritual with a wholesome message of love, community, and diversity. And we reenact a ritual that is part of a movement of brave resistance speaking up for the truth that no one person is better than another. Turning toward the flower ceremony this year, I wish it were a tradition that died out because it was no longer meaningful. I wish we no longer had to speak up for the beauty of each individual, the importance of inclusion, and the truth that no one kind of person is better than another. But the need remains. It is sadly perennial. This June, this month of queer pride, we need to bear witness to the truth that even though Massachusetts is a relatively safe and welcoming place, lawmakers in other states are actively targeting queer people, especially transgender people. The Human Rights Campaign shares these sobering statistics. Over 520 anti-queer bills have been introduced in state legislatures. This is a record. 220 of these bills target transgender people. Emerging from this process, more than 74 anti-queer laws have been passed, including a ban on gender-affirming care, drag performances, and queer-friendly books and curricula. Other laws allow or require the misgendering of students. 
At the offering, we note that I will match this Sunday's share of the plate with resources from the minister's discretionary fund to go to partner organizations serving transgender people and their families in this time of crisis. For the first time since I've been in ministry, the recipients of our financial support need to be kept confidential out of concern about what right-wing activists will do if their work is made public. This flower ceremony, I remind us that this ritual celebrating nature and beauty began by one who gave their life in service to the vision of a world where all belong, loved as they are. This Pride Month, let us remember that the rainbows and parades and festivals began as a riot, an act of resistance at the Stonewall Inn in New York City, led by transgender leaders not willing to be treated as less than anymore. Behind the flower ceremony, a martyr. Behind the dancing and the glitter and the music, a fierce revolution, affirming the spiritual truth that, as Brenna said earlier, or Riley said earlier, differences are what make us so beautiful and powerful. We need to celebrate our differences as much as our similarities. So this flower ceremony Sunday, this moment, as we turn towards the quieter days of summer, we must remember that the work is incomplete. And we must remember that what seems like contradictions, sweet ceremonies and anti-fascist activism, colorful public celebrations and strategic defiance of authority, these are intimately related. The courage to reject the wrong name or the degraded place you've been given in this world is grounded not in bitterness but in joy in delighting in how we are wonderfully made. Courage is grounded in love, countercultural love of self and love of all others, willing to tell the truth about who they are. Perhaps activist Adrian Marie Brown said it best, put your attention on suffering, which is constant and everywhere, and it is all that you will see. Joy will come and laughter, but you'll find it brief, possibly a distraction. Put your attention on joy, being connected and feeling whole, and you will find it everywhere. Your heart will still break. You will know grief, but you will find it a reasonable cost for the random abundance of miracles and the soft, wild rhythms of love. Later, when we exchange our flowers, I invite you to put your attention on both the bouquet and the stem that you choose, or maybe the one that chooses you. In this moment, we are surrounded by an abundance of miracles. You, every single one of you, is a miracle. As we have for 100 years, we are called to embody and make space in this world for this abundant and miraculous love. Now comes that important time for us to make an offering to support this self-supporting church and its many ministries. The last few years have been tough for us individually, but it has also been a tough time for the financial health of the Winchester Unitarian Society. Giving makes possible the many benefits that this wonderful community supports. In addition to supporting our own community, we want to play a positive role in the world around us in our actions and in our gifts. For this reason, we choose to share the plate. This morning, we share our gifts with the Czech Unitarian Religious Society, supporting their Czech Unitarian summer camp for youth, children, and families, Ukrainian refugees in the Czech Republic, and the Czech Unitarian Academy, training for lay leaders and ministers. The share the plate amount will be matched up to $500 from the miniature, minister's discretionary fund to benefit First Parish Malden. First Parish is accepting donations to provide direct supports, mutual aid, and to sustain travel networks for transgender people and transgender families seeking care or relocation due to recent anti-trans laws in their home states. Here are the different ways you can donate. Those in the sanctuary may give 
cash, checks, or donate electronically, text to the number in your order of service or visit our website under the giving page. If you are visiting for the first time, either in person or online, you are our guest. In-person attendees can find a physical visitor card in the pew racks in front of you. Please complete it and put it in the collection plate. Information about how to give online and how to complete the virtual visitor card will soon be shared with live stream attendees through text on your screen. The offering will now be generously given and gratefully received. Those who wish to do so are invited to join in the shared, in the unison affirmation. We gather not for ourselves alone, but to use our common power 
to build the beloved community within and beyond these walls. We create and reaffirm this covenant this day to make justice flourish, to practice compassion amidst difference, and to embody transformative love. We are approaching that time in the service when you're invited to come forward and select a flower different than the one that you brought. And in so doing, you are publicly choosing to companion another in this thing called life. You may select a flower from any of us up, up front. You may also raise a hand and a bouquet will be brought to you. Let us now exchange our flowers. Let us rise in body and spirit to join in singing hymn number 66, when the summer sun is shining.
please find your flower and hold it high. May we always remain mindful of the radical power of love, how dangerous those who use fear to claim power know love to be, how necessary the spirit and struggle for universal love, for human dignity, for every life, and for all creation, always. As we go forth, may we always remain mindful. We are the planters of the seeds, we are the tenders of the garden. We are the keepers of the flame. Go in peace. Amen. working seems to be okay good um, okay as moderator I'm calling our special meeting for today our special congregational meeting to order um, first I need to make sure there's a quorum would every person here who is a member of the Winchester Unitarian Society please raise your hands <laughs> 